This is out at Marshall where we're going for the balloon flight now. We're coming out of the balloon shelter, same one we'll be using today. The one that we're going to be flying today measures ozone, it measures the temperature or the atmosphere and pressure as you're going up in the altitude or the position of the balloon, the winds and all of that sort of thing. This one just measured water vapor and temperature. Wow. Well, this isn't the same. This isn't the same day, but um, I have a different jacket on. Frank has his sweater on. Here I am in a heavy coat, and Frank's got short sleeves. Oh, Frank got it. Somehow, I think it's going to be pretty easy to measure water vapor in the atmosphere this morning, at least near to the ground. My name is Dale Hurst, and I'm the water vapor project leader at NOAA ESRO Global Monitoring Division. Um, 30 years ago, in April 1980, the first balloon sounding of water vapor was made over Boulder. And at that time, Sam Oltmans had brought technology for a balloon-borne water vapor instrument from the Naval Research Lab in Washington, D.C. Yeah. I feel, to, I feel very, very lucky. I feel lucky because, number one, I am in the unique position of representing all the many scientists who benefited from this remarkable record in their own research without doing all the hard work of producing it. And for that, I'm, I'm extremely grateful. Uh, you can be assured that the world scientific community understands the special value of this data set and uh, has made uh, amazing use of it in many, many different studies. Talk a little bit about this, this, this issue of water vapor and, and this record. I, I just want to add a little bit to what Dale said earlier. The primary way that water vapor influences surface climate has to do really with the water vapor in the lower atmosphere. And in that case, water vapor clearly is the follower of global climate change. Not the driver, but the, the response and, and indeed an amplifying feedback. But it isn't the case that global climate is, uh, is, uh, is, is somehow at the capricious whim of lower atmospheric water. That is, uh, is very definitely the major feedback, very important. Key issue is that as a secondary contributor to global climate change, upper atmospheric water vapor is indeed showing us some things now that merit much more investigation. We know that uh, water vapor changed dramatically in the year 2000, as you can see there, because of this unique long-term record. It is indeed the world's only record of upper atmospheric water that extends over this entire time period. And that, I think, is something that we in, in Boulder can be uh, truly very, very proud of. So what you see, obviously, is the balloon that's been inflated with helium. In the neck of the balloon is that valve I talked about. The little box, styrofoam box, right beneath the valve, that has the pressure sensor and the electronics board that tells the valve when to open. Yeah, it's a, it's a matter of personnel and cost. The ozone sons are, are very easy to prep and are a lot cheaper to make than the frost point hygrometers. The two tubes sticking uh, vertically out of the... All right. So three, two, one. Okay, what you hear is that payout reel letting the line extend. So in about an hour and a half, this thing will top out at 29,000 meters, and it'll take another approximately two hours to come back down. This is all of our information from the, the radio sound here, the ozone sound here, and then um, we get all the information from the GPS that's on the radio sound, so we can track it down. It tells us where it is, how far away it is, which way the wind's blowing, all that stuff. 
and then uh, all the data coming in from the Frostpoint hygrometer is here. There's a, there's a lot of um, engineering data, and then the most important number is our Frostpoint temperature number, which is converted to uh, water vapor mixing ratio. Tell you Well, it tells you that the dedication of people who came out here week after week to do these kind of soundings over 30 years was amazing. It tells you that scientists who worked under Sam's leadership, people like Dale, Brian Johnson, and many others, the, the many scientists who contributed to this uh, were people with amazing dedication, persistence, and ability. And uh, Sam himself, of course, provided a leadership that was just unmatched. So when you put all that together, what is this record? Priceless. Thank you very much.